prepare to have your mind blown. Incredible news out of NASA. It's historic. Hubble t Space Telescope has discovered the farthest individual star, nicknamed Arendelle. How far back in time can we really see? Could a single star, not just a galaxy, shine across 13 billion years to reach us? And what strange cosmic trick lets us glimpse something that should be invisible? Arendelle's light forces us to ask, are we seeing one star or many? In 2022, astronomers peering through NASA's Hubble Space Telescope caught something they almost didn't believe at first. The faint light of a single star shining from within the first billion years after the Big Bang. Until then, galaxies were the smallest beacons anyone thought we could glimpse across such distances. Whole star systems smudged into faint arcs of light. But this star, nicknamed Arendelle, Old English for Morning Star, had managed to cross nearly 13 billion years of time to reach us. But this star is 13 billion light years away, um, and we're looking over 90% of the way back to the Big Bang. We've only ever seen galaxies that far away, so it, millions or billions of stars. So to see an individual star like this is just amazing. The discovery wasn't luck alone. A massive galaxy cluster called WHL 0137-08 sat in just the right position to warp space-time, magnifying the background universe. It's become a very powerful tool for studying the universe. At its most spectacular, we see extreme warping of the shapes of distant galaxies as their light travels through the deep gravitational wells of intervening galaxies and galaxy clusters. That cosmic lens stretched Arendelle's host galaxy into a crescent now known as the Sunrise Arc. And by a rare stroke of alignment, Arendelle itself fell along a precise ripple in space-time called a caustic. This made its light flare up a thousandfold, pulling it out from the galaxy's glow and into Hubble's vision. Without that lensing trick, Arendelle would have remained hidden forever. Astronomers estimate the star is at least 50 times the mass of the sun and millions of times brighter, a kind of stellar giant that burns fast and dies young. Not everyone is convinced it's a lone star. Some suggest it might instead be a dense cluster of stars so tightly packed that they blend into one brilliant point. Models tested against Webb's data don't yet rule this out. If future microlensing fluctuations show Arundel flickering in brightness, that would confirm it as a single, massive star. But even if it proves to be a cluster, the achievement stands. This is among the most distant stellar light sources humanity has ever identified. And Arundel might just be the beginning. As Brian Welch, the scientist who led the discovery, put it, with Webb, we may see stars even more distant than Arundel. I would love to see Webb break this record. When astronomers talk about Population 3 stars, they're talking about the first generation, the stars that lit up the universe after the Big Bang. Born from pristine clouds of hydrogen and helium, they carried no trace of heavier elements because none existed yet. Population 3 stars have no heavier elements whatsoever. They were the first ever stars shining in the first ever proto-galaxies, born of the pristine hydrogen-helium gas that filled the universe soon after the Big Bang. That absence mattered. Without metals to cool the gas, these stars are thought to have grown to staggering sizes, some hundreds of times the mass of the sun, blazing hotter and brighter than anything that came after them, only to burn out in a few million years. For a brief moment, they were the giants that flooded the young cosmos with ultraviolet light. That light changed everything. After recombination, the universe was filled with neutral hydrogen, a fog that kept it opaque. But as the first stars came alive, their radiation ripped electrons from hydrogen atoms, turning the fog transparent. This was the reionization era, the moment the universe shifted from darkness into light, when the first galaxies began stitching themselves together. To understand how that dawn unfolded, we need to know what those primordial stars were really like. This is why Arendelle matters. Spotted in the sunrise arc, as earlier stated, its light stretched across 12 billion years and then magnified by a cosmic lens, Arendelle stands out as an individual beacon at the edge of visibility. 
Normally, stars that far away blur into the glow of their galaxies, but lensing lets us separate it. And if Arendelle, or something like it, turns out to be a Population 3 star, it would be the first direct proof that these long-theorized giants were real. The test lies in spectroscopy. A true Population 3 star should show no heavy elements at all, only the clean signatures of hydrogen and helium. Even if Arendelle isn't entirely metal-free, its chemistry still matters. A star with extremely low metallicity, what some call Population 2.5, would still capture the transition from the first stars to the second wave. That would tell us how quickly galaxies seeded themselves with heavier elements and how fast star formation began to accelerate. Finding even a single Population 3 star would be a turning point. It would anchor our models of reionization to something solid, proving that the first galaxies really were powered by these colossal, short-lived furnaces. Arundel doesn't settle the mystery yet, but its very discovery shows we're finally peering into the realm where the universe's first stars may come into view. 13 billion years ago, a star lived and died long before Earth existed, yet its light has only just arrived. Arendelle is more than a cosmic record breaker. It is a messenger from the dawn, a reminder that the universe is still full of firsts waiting to be seen. When astronomers say Arendelle lies more than 12 billion light years away, they're not guessing. They're leaning on the cosmic distance ladder, a toolkit built to measure the universe step by step. For nearby stars, it's simple enough, parallax. Watch how a star shifts ever so slightly against the background as Earth moves around the Sun and the distance falls right out of the geometry. But parallax only works close to home, a few thousand light years at best. Arendelle is far beyond that, so distant that its light began its journey when the universe was still under a billion years old. At such extremes, astronomers turn to redshift. As the universe expands, the light from galaxies is stretched shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. The more distant the source, the greater the stretch. Arundel sits inside the Sunrise Arc galaxy, whose spectrum places it at a redshift of about 6.2. In everyday terms, the universe has expanded by more than a factor of seven since Arundel's photons left. That makes the light we're seeing today nearly 13 billion years old, a direct message from cosmic dawn. Of course, nothing about this is perfectly straightforward. Arendelle's appearance is shaped by the gravitational lensing of a massive galaxy cluster in the foreground. The exact mass distribution of that cluster adds uncertainty, and small shifts in the models can slightly change the magnification and distance estimates. But even with those caveats, the picture holds. We are looking at one of the farthest single points of starlight ever pulled into focus a record-breaking beacon from the early universe. One of the cleanest ways to pin down Arundel's true identity is to watch how its light behaves over time. The star owes its visibility to gravitational lensing, a massive galaxy cluster bending space-time so that Arundel's photons are magnified thousands of times. But that magnification isn't smooth. Scattered throughout the cluster are individual stars, stellar remnants, and other compact objects that create a restless mesh of microlenses. As they drift in their orbits, they tug at the background light in tiny, unpredictable ways. If Arundel really is a single star, its light would be focused onto one of these micro lenses, like a spotlight, where the magnification starts to, to skyrocket. So it starts to become a, an incredibly high magnification just right in that spot, and that's how we're able to, to see this one star. The magnification would flicker, sometimes spiking, sometimes dipping, on timescales of months or years. On top of that, a truly massive star can have its own quirks. Pulsations, winds, or brief outbursts that shift its brightness slightly. With the precision of JWST, those subtle changes should be detectable. But if Arundel is not one star, but a small cluster blurred together by the lens, the story looks different. In that case, each star within the cluster would be micro-lensed separately, and their combined light would average out into a steadier glow. The absence of sharp flickers would be the telltale sign that we're looking at a crowd of stars masquerading as one. So far, Arundel hasn't shown the expected flickers. 
Its brightness has held steady, leaving room for doubt. That doesn't rule out the single star scenario. Sometimes even a lone star can sit quietly on the lensing field, but it keeps the cluster interpretation very much alive. And that's why astronomers keep watching. If Arendelle turns out to be one massive star, it becomes the farthest individual star ever seen, a solitary beacon from cosmic dawn. If it's a compact cluster, it's still extraordinary, an early building block of the galaxies and globular clusters we know today. Either answer reshapes how we imagine the first stars and structures forming in the universe. The cosmos has given us this magnified glimpse. Now it's up to time and careful monitoring to reveal whether Arendelle is one shining giant or many faint voices woven together. Arendelle may have been discovered with Hubble, but it's JWST that has changed the game. Hubble's optical and near-infrared eyes were sharp enough to catch the faint, magnified flicker of the star, but its reach stopped short of where the earliest epochs truly live. By the time the light from the first stars and galaxies reaches us, the expansion of the universe has stretched it deep into the infrared. That's the territory JWST was built for. Where Hubble could only hint, Webb can dig in, measuring, dissecting, and pulling real details out of that ancient light. And it's already paying off. Webb hasn't just confirmed Arendelle's nature, it's begun to add others to the story. One of them is Quilla, a red giant star whose light comes from just three billion years after the Big Bang. Arendelle shows us a hot, massive star at extreme distance. Quilla shows that Webb can also catch cooler, older stars in the young universe. Together, they prove something once thought impossible. We can now study individual stars across billions of years, not just the galaxies that contain them. 